This video is a short extract from our course on concrete construction cost estimating. In our full course, we go into everything that's required to accurately calculate the cost of concrete construction works. From understanding the different methodologies, accurately measuring quantities, estimating productivities and more. Although we said our course wasn't designed for beginners and targeted at individuals with a basic understanding of construction cost estimating, in this short lecture we are going to quickly review the basics of construction cost estimating. We'll look at the basic process from start to finish. The purpose of this lecture is to review the basic estimating process and provide a quick refresher to understand the specific process that we follow and teach at Construct IQ. Remember, everybody will have slightly different ways of forming an estimate, so it is important to be familiar with how we teach and do it. Then with this, to understand how we have structured the course. And finally, to better understand what specifically we need to understand and know about concrete construction to accurately estimate costs. At its most basic, the goal of construction estimating is to work out how much it costs to transform a set of drawings, specifications and requirements into a finished product. We want to calculate a dollar figure to turn a set of drawings into reality. If we want to give it a definition, the estimating process is the process of calculating and approximating the total expenses associated with a construction project. It involves systematically evaluating all the costs including materials, labour, equipment, subcontractors, overheads, contingencies and any other relevant expenses needed to complete the project successfully. Before we look too much at the specific steps, let's look at the components of a cost estimate. If we first understand these components of the estimate and how they fit together, the process will make more sense. First, we have direct costs. Direct costs are construction costs directly associated with completing portions of the project scope. So if we were building a bridge, these are the costs for building the foundations, standing the structural steel and putting in the guardrail. Direct costs are always associated with on-site physical construction works that form part of the finished product. Direct costs are made up of four key components, labour, material, plant and equipment and subcontract costs. Indirect costs are the opposite of direct costs. Indirect costs, also known as overhead or preliminary costs, are expenses incurred by a project that cannot be directly attributed to a specific activity. Unlike direct costs, which are directly associated with a particular activity, indirect costs are incurred to support the overall project and are shared across multiple activities. Examples of indirect costs include management staff salaries, temporary office hire and security guards. Indirect costs can be largely grouped as either recurring, whether they are incurred continually throughout the project life cycle, and non-recurring, where they are one-off expenses. Our total project costs are a combination of our direct and indirect costs. To our total project costs, we need to factor in some contingency, referred to as our risk and opportunity, which accounts for any uncertainties in our pricing. And finally, we can then add our profit margin. Now we understand the components of a cost estimate, the steps we need to follow to produce the estimate will make more sense. At a high level, to produce a cost estimate, we first need to understand the project scope. We need to look at the drawings and specifications to understand specifically what we are being asked to price. Next, we'll calculate our direct costs. These are the costs to complete the physical construction works. The majority of work in a cost estimate is in calculating the direct costs. Then, we'll calculate our indirect costs. We always calculate our direct costs first because these will influence our indirect costs and our direct costs will be impacted by our understanding of the project scope. Next, we work out our contingency and finally add on our profit margin. For this course, as we are talking about construction cost estimating, we are going to primarily narrow our focus to the direct costs. We'll talk a little bit about risk and opportunity and indirect costs, but our main focus is on the direct activity costs. Calculating direct costs is a process in and of itself. The process we follow to calculate direct costs is as follows. First, we need to prepare our work breakdown structure and bill of quantities. You will often see these referred to differently, but for the purpose of what we are trying to do and what we need, which I'll explain in more detail shortly, we need both. Next, for each activity in our WBS, we need to understand exactly how we are going to complete that construction activity and what resources are required. Then, based on productivity rates and the quantum of work from our bill of quantities, we can estimate the activity duration. And from our base resources cost, we can then calculate our resource rates. Don't worry if these steps don't make too much sense now, we'll cover them off in more detail. It is also worth noting that there are lots of different ways to estimate costs. Don't worry if this method isn't exactly what you're used to. As the saying goes, there are a lot of ways to skin a cat. So even if you typically use a slightly different method, have a go with our steps and see if it works for you. The first step is to prepare our work breakdown structure and bill of quantities. What we want to do is break the project scope down into component pieces. 
For example, if the scope we are pricing has several different concrete slabs, we could break the scope down into slab 1, 2 and 3. Next, we want to measure or estimate all of the key quantities for each activity. For example, for a concrete slab, we will want to know the cubic metres of concrete, the metres squared of formwork, the tonnes of steel reinforcement and so on. We will either need to measure these quantities from the drawings or estimate the quantities using estimating rules. It is important to get these quantities right because these quantities will ultimately be driving our cost. For each activity in our WBS, we then need to understand what resources we need. We need to understand the delivery methodology and exactly how we are going to do the work and what is required to do it. The resources needed for each activity will be a combination of labour, plant, materials and subcontractors. For example, for slab 1, we would need concrete, a concrete pump, concreters, form workers and so on. Next, now we know what activities we need to complete and what resources we need to complete them, we need to estimate the duration we need these resources based on productivity rates. Our resource duration will then be the quantum of work from our bill of quantities divided by our productivity rate. For example, if we need to complete 100 meters squared of formwork at an average productivity rate of one meter hour per meter squared, then we need 100 meter hours for formwork. Then once we've worked out our resource quantities, all we need to do is multiply these quantities by our resource rates. If we need 10 meters cubed of concrete, then we multiply this by our resource rate of $120 per meter cubed to get a total cost of $1,200 for concrete materials. If we need 100 man hours for formwork at $65 per man hour, then our cost is $6,500 for formwork labor. We can then simply sum all of these together to get our total activity costs. The basic process of estimating is actually incredibly easy and intuitive. The hard part is coming up with accurate quantities and production rates. Our core structure will then focus on understanding these key items for concrete works. In section one, we'll look at understanding concrete construction and what's involved. In section two, we'll talk about how to accurately identify and calculate the key quantities. In section three, we'll look at resources and production and how to calculate key productivity rates. In section four, we'll look at indirect costs and risk and opportunity specific to concrete works. And in section five, we'll do a fully worked example so you can see the process and how we apply this knowledge to a real world concrete cost estimating example.